yeah so my name's Loz I'm I'm the I'm in the band Ride a uh, band from the UK from Oxford um we've been around since um about 1990 um we've uh put a lot of re records out and um, toured extensively around the world. And um, we're very excited to be coming to Australia for maybe the third or fourth time. It's always been great times out there. And we're going to be playing our debut album, Nowhere, um, which is um, in, definitely in the top 100 records you must hear before you die and won record of the year and um, several times. And, and yeah, has been in, received a few accolades in its time. Um, so it's going to be nice to revisit that and play it all in full in Australia. Beautiful, Loz. Thanks for joining us this evening, mate. Oh, you're welcome. No, it's good. It's, it's nice to chat. <laughs> sure is. As, as you mentioned, Ride returned to Australia in under a week for a tour celebrating the 30th anniversary of your debut album, Nowhere. So a uh, milestone like that certainly sort of rubs it in that we're getting older, doesn't it, bro? 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean luckily we were pretty young when we did when we did um record it so you know the 30 years doesn't weigh quite as heavily but but yeah for sure it, it's always a bit of a shock when that number comes up 30 <laughs> years my goodness Unreal. You, you play your first show in adelaide on november the 29th before moving through melbourne sydney brisbane and perth and finishing up in auckland on december the 6th so what can we expect yep. from the shows i think you're gonna expect i think well i know what you're gonna get i think Pretty much, um, you're gonna you're gonna get a very uh, energetic and lively and truthful and authentic ver uh, rendering of of that album. I mean, the album was recorded really. You know, this is about, basically we recorded it live. You know, in the studio. These are before the days of digital editing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the band were very new, very young, um, and um, you know, it was our first album. So we weren't really doing many clever studio techniques or anything. We just went in and and played it you know um so yeah and that's what you're going to get live um but with the ex lots of experience and lots of practice so we're, we're, we're getting good at doing these songs so um yeah i think you're going to get a, a really exciting live electric version of it so is it actually like you sort of touched on it there mate but like is it easy to reproduce that album in full playing it live like i couldn't imagine when you actually wrote and recorded it that you ever envisaged that you'd have to play the whole album no definitely not you know it was um obviously it was made in um made in bits and pieces you know it was made uh well you know one track at a time you might you might spend a day on it or something um might spend longer even um but uh it was yeah it, it came in dribs and drabs and um i suppose a lot of the songs i suppose a lot of the songs were written before we went in and we've been playing them live and so we just got them down other ones were created in the studio for example nowhere kaleidoscope um there's a few others uh well here and now wasn't on the album but that's another one that was written there so so yeah they were um they were new they were created in the studio and then subsequent sub subsequently we learned how to play them live um i think we because it's one of the first ones um well it was the first one um we have covered a lot of the songs and there weren't any surprises there um but you know it, it's it's still good to revisit and um remind yourself how to do how to do these things but we, we've we've we did this tour in january in, in the uk and it, and the, the home crowd loved it so um we are we are used to it now and of course that album was a breakthrough for you guys like it just went on to set up a, a, an amazing career mate but back then like was was there any part of you that actually knew that you're onto something special like did was there any part of it you finished and you went yeah this is this is going to be pretty cool I think um, it was, I mean, it, it, it was almost the opposite. It was almost like um, we finished the album and just, and um, I don't know, I, there, there was a, there was, there was a sense. Well, certainly I remember thinking like, uh, you know, w almost like we failed. We didn't, we didn't do it. We didn't manage to capture anything. We didn't, we didn't truly capture the sound of the band. Um, you know, it, it didn't feel like it sounded that great. Um, and I almost couldn't listen to it for a while, uh, quite, quite a long time. Um, and but um what's what's been really interesting is that over the years and you know the band broke up and it got back together again and in the meantime you know respect and um and the sort of the, the accolades for the album grew and then so i did when i did go back to listen to it suddenly i, I did i did kind of get it and um and so so yeah i i, I i've got the respect for it now but it wasn't like, yeah, we finished that album. Yeah, we're cool. We're going to, you know, this is great. We're, we've really, we really captured something that it, it didn't feel like that. No, it, it was almost the opposite. But now, many years later, I can listen to it and go, you know, I'm not going to swear on the radio, but um, it was kind of like, wow, we really did, 
we really did some quite interesting things um, for a bunch of uh, teenagers, you know? There's some complex things going on there that I didn't even know we were capable of. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> I know it's over 30 years ago now, mate, but what's some of your favourite memories of the writing and recording process for that album? Oh, I mean, definitely um, the, I think, com the coming up with the, the, the sort of, the drum break for Dreams Run down in rehearsal when we were in a, we were record, rehearsing in a big um, music venue in Oxford, and uh, it was great because it just everything just sounded big and huge in that room, and and that's where you know the drum beat for uh, Dreams Run Down came out, um, but also and then in that in the in the studio sessions um, recording Nowhere the, the track Nowhere because it was kind of like a free form um, improvised jam that we were doing that was exciting. Um, I can remember the excitement for all of us. It was our first record, you know, so pretty much uh, pretty much everything was either, you know, was intense or exciting. Um, I can remember um, Andy and Mark getting into their pedal boards and, um, and, and working out new sounds um, and, uh, you know, it, it, and also getting things down like uh, uh, Decay um just the the sort of sense of of, of intensity um and achievement when you when you when you got to the end of playing um a song that was new because that was a new song at the time so you know brand new so so yeah just lots of lots of firsts i remember playing pool listening to public enemy watching the world cup um but, and coming in and out of uh, london every, um every day and and eating a, a lovely sort of greasy spoon eggs beans and chips cafe in the morning um, so yeah, lots of good memories, but I have to say overall, it was really intense and we were, you know, teenagers going through some dark times and ex existential grief. And it, it, it was, you know, like the album artwork, the dark, the sort of the blue and the, the black and blue, it was, it was dark times as well. Um, but you know, I do have good memories. So Rydak formed back in 1988, mate. So what was the musical climate like back then that gave birth to the band and where did you fit in initially? I mean, yeah, 88. So you've got, you know, you've got the, um, the, the you've got the end of the sort of, you've got, there's, there's the sort of shiny 80s. And then you've got the reaction to that with all the, the, the sort of anti-pop. And the, with, this is where indie comes from. I mean, that we were, we were brought up on independent labels. This is when it really meant something. We were, we were counterculture. We were the, we were the alternative to um, shiny pop, mainstream, everything perfect, happy, smiley, clear crystal sounding blah 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 we were the we were the the counterculture to that we were on an independent label with noise and we were um not performing you know we were not trying to sort of um engage and and chat to the audience um so so yeah we 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 felt like we were part of that sort of counterculture and we very much were a sort of subversive movement really um trying to bring you know noise and 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 and, and ex uh, to the masses and we were hugely inspired by yes the house of love my buddy valentine um and uh you know dinosaur jr and loop and spaceman three and so yeah it, it was it felt like we were you know we were part of the the kind of the revolution in a way <laughs> um back at back in the day yeah i mean it, it kind of was independent label means something different now but but that meant back then it really meant something and we were an we were an indie band yeah and of course, the success of Nowhere led to Ride's first Australian tour back in 1991. So, have you got many memories? Yeah. Of that? Any memories of that trip, mate? Yeah, I do. I mean, it was, it was, it was. Uh, I think getting to Australia was um, was a relief. That tour was was grueling. It was just like that. Was Australia was fitted in? Sort of. Uh, I think we went to America for seven, eight weeks, and then I think it was um, either Japan before or after, and Australia, and then we went back to Europe, and and, it, and we'd just come before America. We'd been touring the UK, and it was just it was just kind of endless. And it, that, this was our first experience of serious and proper sort of round the world touring and long haul flights so yeah i may have been a bit jet lagged but we had some great times and uh, i've got um got photos of us all just just enjoying being in america mark went jet skiing and we we're all just like little kids really listen like this is amazing it's australia you know and enjoying the landscape and the and the um i wasn't a surfer then but i enjoyed swimming in the sea and we just we were just like kids really just couldn't believe that we we were actually standing in, in on Australian soil and being able to see some of the sites. So, um, so yeah, I've got 
I've got memories of it being like a, um, a, a sort of a, a very a micro holiday amongst the sea of touring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I won't dwell on this too much, mate, but the band broke up back in 1996. So do you think in part that maybe you guys tasted success too early in your career and put a lot of pressure on you? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, kind of hinted at it then with this sort of arduous touring that we were doing. Uh, I think it was all it was a lot, a lot, a lot too soon. And uh, we, we were we were worked very hard. We didn't have a we didn't get to have a break. And I think a lot that a lot of bands survive because they take time out from each other. And we, we kind of never did. It was it was pretty relentless from the Chelsea Girl first EP all the way through till you know the end of the band. Um, we could have just done with a bit of a break, probably after going blank again. Um, you know, that's when we could have done with a, a, a bit of time out. Um, and unfortunately, because we didn't, it just, you know, the wheels started to fall off. And you reformed 18 years later in 2014 to a completely different musical landscape, mate. Like, was it a tough adjustment coming back into a world that was completely different to the one you left musically? Yeah, it was. But but we I, oddly and, and perversely felt more ready for it because, you know, when we when we uh, when we did our, our debut album, we, we were be, we felt like just beginners, you know, first time in the first time recording an album in the studio, first time, um, you know, doing all this kind of touring that I just, you know, was just talking about. It was it was first time all the way. Having done all of that and had a success as a band and, and had had the, the peaks and troughs of that that lifespan and then broken up, had time away from it to come back in. We'd all become producers in the meantime. We'd all worked, um, learnt, um, uh, yeah, we'd learnt how to, um, you know, record our own music. Um, we'd all put out our own music. I played in, we played in different bands. We came back to it as much more experienced and, and seasoned musicians with a lot more experience and and uh, and and sort of authentic authenticity in a way, and and also a desire to um, an artistic desire to fulfil that 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 we didn't get to do, but in the first in, in incarnation of ride so our priority you know with weather diaries was we wanted to make a really good studio album and and use the studio as a sort of creative tool and we did that with errol alcan and so it feels like a huge uh, relief to make weather diaries actually we finally got to do all the studio things we never got to do before well so, so how would you say ride changed musically as a band in that period that you were to apart i mean it's i suppose it changed because you're separated from the you're separated from the um the constant ongoing sense of being in a band so you get time to think and look at things a little bit objectively and maybe a bit more aesthetically and say is this good was it working doing that should i maybe try this next time and if you ever had a time when you thought ah oh, i wish i'd done this or oh, it would have been so good to do that you could do it you know we could we were able to do it in 2018 well, it was 2016 when we started recording it. We were able to sort of put a lot of those things right. You know, I might have simplified some of the drum patterns. I think Mark and Andy focused very much on really getting their vocals sounding good. There was a lot of um, technology. You know, we'd, we'd use synthesizers and drum machines and samplers. You know, I'd, I'd done a kind of MA in contemporary music and it was kind of like, yeah let's get some of this in <laughs> <laughs> shit all right, all right mate. well thanks very much for your time tonight Loz. it's been a pleasure chatting with you ride to hit australia on november 29th starting in adelaide and work the way around the country so be playing that great album nowhere in full so if you get along to check it out you won't be disappointed thank you very much yeah i mean the shows in england have been great it might have been post covid but people were just so so glad to be able to sort of experience live music again so uh, yeah it's going to be a good it's going to be a good some good shows